the alarm noise off, but it mm -hmm. doesn't kill the actual alarm. The mm -hmm. light will stay lit and you can disable it all the way. Uh, that's where we have the components that are the controlled by web modules, the atom modules and so forth. Doesn't require one computer, any computer. Mm -hmm. The only thing you need the computer for is to show what the tankage is and so forth. Mm -hmm. All this is, control is in here, they're standard off the shelf components, mm -hmm. no okay. magic. Behind the door here is the control for filling the um, fresh water tank. It's solenoid control, so you can open your valves to the shore water, turn it on, and it'll flood the tank oh, all the way. You can control which one of the water pumps. There's two, redundancy. Gray water pumps, etc. All the lighting, switching, and so on. The alarms for the builds and so forth, all from this one panel. Mm -hmm. And they open up, and they're accessible and common right. components. The mains are Cummings KT-19A M3s. That's the marine version. The reason they were selected is that the, they can be controlled by the ZF controller, which is a computer control, or should that fail, they could be actually hand manipulated and run by themselves. Same thing with the transmission. You can kick it into gear, out of gear, forward, reverse, by hand if need be. Sensors and so forth that are on it come from Cummings. There's two sets, one that feeds Tim's monitoring system. The other are the Cummings actual control boxes, which are the switches you'd see on a truck, on a boat, on a tractor, whatever, and manual gauges, not electric, manual. Reason for that, or mechanical I should say, the reason for that is backup for backup for backup, redundancy. Heat exchange is above the water tank, overflow, heat exchange, you pop the leads off, you can clean all of the heat exchange, which is getting ready to be done again. The thermostats and so forth, as you can tell, all of the different electrical controls for it are out in the open. We use the k and air filter on it because they breathe easier. It is a six cylinder in line. Each cylinder can be removed all the way down to the bottom of the block so that if you needed to rebuild a single cylinder, head, piston, sleeve, rods, etc., you can pull that one particular off. With the engine shut down, the prop locked underway, should you have the parts. And there's virtually no oil in the build. That's unheard of in a boat like this. There had better be no oil it's in my build. It's compared to a lot of engines I see. We do not drip oil. Uh, when we change oil, you'll notice that there's a hose valve, a hose in a valve. Mm -hmm. I have a hose that hooks up to that to a pump. It pumps the oil out, puts it in five gallon containers, and then once it's out, it'll pump the oil, new oil back in. Yeah. But even, yeah, that's crazy. But even operation, these engines don't leak oil. No. It's amazing. Yeah. No. Okay. They're also low hours. What are they? These are single turbos, each engine? Yes. Okay. 1,900 hours on them. That's after going through the canal. That's not many. In fact, I believe they're still under warranty. What's the uh, RPMs for cruising speed and top RPMs? Uh, with no wind and no current problems to try to do 1,200 RPM, 1,150 or 1,200 RPM, uh, you'll be doing 8 to 10 knots, depending on sea state, depending on winds and currents. Oh, maximum half a gallon per hour for the water ma uh, water heater. Mm -hmm. You'll burn, well, on the trip down, they did 16.6 .6 gallons per hour. Wow. Six, that's two mains at 155 kW and the water heater, 16.6. 9.4, most of it, actually 14 at one point at 1100 RPM, but that's with the current behind them, the wind behind them, yeah. everybody on one side, uh, unheard of. ZF transmission, four and a half to one. Again, electronically controlled. However, also mechanically, should you need to. Mm -hmm. Everything is vented. This is for the uh, PVC valve, if you want to call it that. That's your mechanical control valve. Wow. That's it. You notice that they are soft mounted, rubber mounts. Mm -hmm. And then the actual, you can only see it from this angle. I don't want to unbolt everything. Mm -hmm. Right back down there, it's the, the black. Right. It's the actual rubber coupling. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. So it's a soft couple to the shaft. Mm -hmm. The thrust bearing and so forth is right behind it. These are the torque fuses, and they're covered in grease, which makes them look rusty. Mm -hmm. And they were just changed. Mm -hmm. and where's the shear pin? That is the shear pins. Those are the four shear pins. Yep. Okay, these are the four shear pins, and that's the locking beam. Pops down, goes across, the rod goes down into the hole in the shaft. Wow, what a feature. Okay. Stuffing boxes are... Mm -hmm. Supposedly dripless, but I always run them with a slight drip. That's just me. You know, we have not yet cleaned up from having gone around from the Panama Canal, which she looks like in port. And what are these three? These are three AC. These are 
three freak converters they call them what it does is it takes 220 volts single phase converts it to 220 volts three phase mm. that allows us to run one per compressor for the air conditioning system mm. and allows us to run a three phase soft start compressor mm. reason that's nice is that there is no 50 amp right. kick when the air conditioning kicks in and it allows you to control the actual speed of the compressor mm -hmm. so that you if you don't need full you can run it down 50 40 percent whatever mm -hmm. it may be uh, all your control goes from here where you can run one compressor at a time we can or each of the others as well in stages mm -hmm. we were in 86 degree water in la paz running a single compressor compressor three and the boat staying cool was working its butt off but it was staying cool mm -hmm. if we kicked in the second compressor the waveform just went actually on oh, that's the other part on the monitoring system you can see exactly what the system is doing and keep track of on a time lapse mm -hmm. now if you need to work on the air conditioning again we don't rely strictly on the electronics you have your mechanical high and low shutoffs mm -hmm everything to keep track of it. Behind this panel, it looks like the panel opens up. The panel does open up. These are the web control by web modules. Those are just contactors for kicking in. And then standard relaying so forth, which is a matter of uh, watching the no flow, for instance, of the cooling water or that the, the circulation water is not moving, it'll shut it down. Mm -hmm. Or if it goes over pressure, low pressure, etc. So anyway, all the software, like I was telling you, in HTML, PHP, and XML. Mm -hmm are all right. there. Wow. Common components. There's nothing here that was not manufactured by us. We don't do that. It's all off the shelf. Readily available by internet. Cooling coils are in here. Rest of the system. Mm. It's a good place for stowage, which I do. Mm -hmm. Again, everything accessible. 12.5K Northern Lights nighttime generator. Controls for your air conditioning. We have one dedicated night generator for air conditioning. And you do the switching there between shore power and the generator. Stowage. This is a bubble catcher. We run a bubble catcher on each of the sea, um, sea cocks. Mm -hmm. As you're buzzing along, you know, you're going to get bubbles underneath. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem we've got is that the water maker is incredibly sensitive to bubbles. If it gets a bubble in it, it shuts down and wow. gets all sorts of nasty. With a bubble catcher, just as simple as this, that's amazing. It um, takes care of the problem outright. Wow. You'll see them on both sides. These are John Deere 55 kW. 220 volt, 200 amp, single phase generators. That's what it looks like after a trip through the canal. Wow. Look we, at that. We ought to clean up now. Look at that. Nothing there. It's lit. It's accessible from both sides. You can check the oil, the water, etc. Um, the panel on the front comes off. It takes a little work, but it comes off. Allows you to get to the uh, raw water pump, the impellers, the heat exchange, etc., etc. Oil drainage is set up again like the mains where you can plug in the hose with the pump, pump the oil out, pump the oil in. Not a drop gets spilled. It's a thing of beauty. Double batteries. Just Everything is double battery. Selectable. They're 12 volt and run. This is where the 12 volt system, the mains are 24s. They are again selectable. Mm -hmm. And that should be there. And this is the raw water intake for That's the generators? That's raw water intake. Okay. It's We're gorgeous. getting ready to go through and replace the strainers. Cracks in some of the support mechanisms on them. Is your fuel, fuel water separators? Yes. Okay. For this generator and the night generator and the hot water heater. Okay. Switchable. Get a problem, Same. something plugs, yeah. switch to the other one. Now I'll figure out what's wrong. No crisis. Uh, this is where you make your switching between what you're going to use for power. Whether right now we're picking up shore power, you could switch to uh, the 55 kW, and then you'd select which one of them you're going to use. You'll run one at a time. This will alternately give you your uh, line one, line two in, as far as your voltage, then your amperage, and so forth. You can sit here and watch, and then this allows you to switch between. Okay. The island fuel scrub system on both sides. The day tank, which is what you're standing on, is fed by any of the tanks, the bow tank or starboard port tanks. Those are the wing tanks outside. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice the aluminum with the cap on both mm -hmm. sides. That one shows it better on this side. That's where we put our fuel in because you can look down inside and see exactly how much fuel is in it. And if there's a spill, it's caught right here before it even... And you just sight down and look at, at your it's fuel. It's just straight down to the tank. Uh, Clean, fresh water, just like a gas station, you can on and off with it. 
the other 12k generator then this is where we store the tools and so forth and as i understand that's that's a home depot store in here it looks like uh, it's close <laughs> and not everything's on the wall where it's supposed to be not everything's <laughs> mm -hmm. fire suppression system uh-huh and then controls with your clutch. Oh, by the way, each of the 55s, it's a redundant hydraulic system, has the hydraulic pumps in the lazarette. Control forts here. You can fire up the generator. If you kick in the hydraulic clutch, then your hydraulics are online. And this particular one, if you want to use a crane, you kick the crane solenoid on. Mm -hmm. uh, in the lazarette, as you can tell on the back side of the generators, are your pumps, your filters, your control for the um, thrusters. That's the back side. Mm -hmm. Again with the steel, watertight yeah. bulkhead, etc. You've got your air underneath, the compressor underneath. I'll leave it turned off if we're not using it because mm -hmm. it's noisy, obviously. Again, off the shelf, oilless pancake. You have toolboxes under the bench, which any engineer and mechanic belongs. All with the lockable drawers. Fuel transfer system is over there. It's pick an input, pick an output, mm -hmm. and that's where it goes. 24 volt control panel, odds and ends, then the bilge pumps for the engine room are controlled here, then the DC bilge pump is controlled here. Each of the buses coming from the battery banks, which are outboard with new batteries are less than a year old. Um, the alarm that goes in here, it's a three bank battery charger, we're using two. The gulper that pumps out each of the, that's the control valve for it. Mm -hmm and it's a momentary on. You have to stand here and hold it so that you can't run it dry and burn up the motor. That meters exactly how much fuel is going from where to where. Mm -hmm. That's it's how you decide how many gallons of fuel you burned. Mm -hmm. And it's very accurate. Um, what else? Controls, circuit breakers for the uh, controls on the mains. We're using Toyotomi oil miser, diesel fired, almost instant on water heater. Stainless tank, so on. Mm -hmm. uh, we use one for fresh water for your showers and so forth. The other one actually heats the water for the air conditioning heating system mm -hmm. when that's selected. And they're practically bulletproof. Now, I am replacing the camera systems in the engine room actually all over the boat. They're infrared and you'll also have them below that looks in the bilge under each of the engines. So like see if I've got and a drip. access panel, what is that for? That's into the fuel tank. Down under the bottom of it, that's the l lowest point, mm -hmm. is a fuel drain. Fuel pressure sensor, it tells me how many how many pounds of pressure are in the tank, which tells me how much fuel is in the tank for the monitoring system. Mm -hmm. Also, it's got a valve on it so you can drain off any water that might get in. Um, it's actually a touch screen for the control computer for the monitoring. I just got the keyboard because I can't work my fingers very well. Big, broad fingers. Uh, the keyboard's normally not there. That's wireless. The rest of the monitors repeat different sections of the control software. This one's going away. There's a white computer that's coming in. That'll be placed with the white as well so that they match. So there's four panels in here. Yep. Two of them will be computers. The other two will be uh, auxiliary for display. Note on the monitoring system, it's showing that the air conditioning waveform, it shows as it ramps up when it shuts on and off, mm -hmm. and then how it reacts. From this, you can tell exactly what's going on in the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. This side over here is giving tankage, and you can go as you're running your mains and it will also track how is it doing so that you can see that the oil pressure dropped off to this at certain point what happened it helps you troubleshoot and keeps the log accordingly you can do your mains you can do your tanks you can do your air conditioning or we can do the cameras except i don't have them hooked up this is where we sit and that's what tim wrote packing gland has rubber they're like a balloon inside they're a bladder mm -hmm. that are air you can air them up. Should you have a leak and lose your seal, you air them up. You wow. shut your shaft down, obviously, but you can air it up, stop the leak. Allows you to open it up and repack it, wow. sitting right in the water, which I've done. That's forethought on the owner's part. Oh, stabilizers are run off the starboard main. Under the assumption that if you're underway, that's when you stabilizers. Mm -hmm. And the control for it and the tankage and so forth is all in here. The, uh, we were referring to the accelerometer unit, the computer that runs with it. Mm -hmm. Sensors are all run from here, and the rest is hydraulic out. All of the supposed fluorescents are actually LED. Reduces heat, reduces my load. 